we're playing the game called Cover Up. It's actually a Marilyn Burns game. And this game is awesome for helping students visualize the relationships between fractions, specifically uh, the meaning of the denominator. So understanding that the more pieces a whole is divided into, the smaller those pieces are. I'm playing with a spinner that only has uh, eighths, fourths, and halves because those are related and can make equivalent fractions. So from my fraction tile kit, I've pulled out just the eighths, the fourths, and the halves. So the first thing that I'm going to do is spin the spinner, and I get one fourth. So I am covering my hole, so I put the one fourth right on top of the hole. And then you can assume we're going around and each player takes their turn spinning. It gets back to me, and I spin again, and now I get a one eighth. So at this point, if I'm playing this game in a small group instruction, a great question that I can ask is, which of those fractions is greater, one-fourth or one-eighth? And the students obviously see that one-fourth is greater. And so then the question could be, well, isn't that interesting? Because I think of eight as being larger than four, so how come one-fourth is greater than one-eighth? And what you want the students to be able to verbalize is, well, with eighths, the whole is divided into eight parts, so those parts are smaller. With fourths, the whole is only divided into four parts, so those parts are larger. That's what we want them to understand. So we spin again, and I'm going to pretend that's an eighth. Um, and now I can put the other eighth on there. And you know, a great question at this point is, what do you notice about those two eighths and that one fourth piece? And the students can't help but recognize that they are equivalent. So even though I'm not teaching a lesson on equivalent fractions, when they're playing the game with the fraction tiles and seeing the tiles, it's pretty hard not to notice that those are equivalent. I spin again and now I get a one fourth. So an interesting question at this point might be, well, what do I want to spin now so that I can win? So you get the kids thinking about, for example, could I spin a one half now? No, because that would be greater than a whole and I have to cover the whole exactly. So you can ask and they might say, well, I think you should have one fourth. But another student who recognized those equivalencies might say, you could also spin one eighth twice to cover the whole. So let's see what happens. Well, I keep getting right on the middle there, so I'm going to pretend that's one eighth. And now I put my one eighth down again. And of course, the question is, what do I need to spin in order to cover my hole? I spin again, I get my one eighth, and now I've covered the hole and the game is over. The first person to cover the hole wins. Now, if you're playing in a small group, the game can continue until, you know, the last person covers the hole. And that is cover up.